Good morning. Welcome back to Built by Bo. Today, Smokey's motor is going in. So let's get the trailer hooked up, get Smokey out of the trailer, get Smokey in the garage. We'll get him jacked up. We'll get the engine stand out. We'll start getting this prepped to go back in the car. Okay, well we got the car unloaded, we got the engine on off the stand, we got uh, Smokey's old block back on the stand so it's not on the floor getting possibly wet or more damaged than it is. And now we're going to uh, put on the mid plate, the flex plate, or flywheel should I say, and we're going to open up the spec clutch, make sure that it's the right clutch, which I kind of already checked and I'm pretty sure it is, and we're going to button that up, get the bell housing on, we're going to get this thing back in the car. Now when it comes to installing the flywheel, the holes only line up one way. So put it up onto the pilot bearing and then spin it around until your holes line up and then you know you've got it clocked to the right position. Your flywheel bolts should always be torqued, so check your manual and reference what the torque specs actually are and torque them to spec as per the manual. Now this uh, spec clutch is uh, actually a stage three spec clutch, part number SF723. It's for basically 8788 or SVO turbo coupe, turbo application, 2.3 motors with the bigger flywheel. So the one that comes on your factory, uh, you know, Fox body 2.3 naturally aspirated Mustang will not work with this clutch. So don't reference this part number. And if you are doing the turbo application, you should step up to the bigger turbo flywheel. So I'll verify my mounting, my mounting is correct. So we'll continue with the installation. So this is your stage three spec clutch disc. And I'm just gonna get some lubrication for the splines and we'll get this on. Now normally the clutches will say flywheel size, you can see here it actually designates that it's for the flywheel side. Now realistically, if you tried to put it the other way around, it just physically wouldn't fit. So it just, it just doesn't fit that way. So if you put it on that way, you'd have to really try to be not doing it correctly. We're going to take your tool and stick it through the splines. So I've got some lubrication on there. I've got some lubrication on the new pilot bearing. Insert that into there like that. Don't let it fall. Grab your clutch. Once you've started all the bolts, just get them so they're just touching the flywheel. Then we're gonna tighten them up slowly in a star pattern. When you look at your alignment tool, this is basically pretending that it's your input shaft for your transmission so just wiggle that around have a look at it make sure that is center in the middle of the pressure plate as best as possible and then we're going to start tightening it up in a star pattern little by little always refer to your manual for your torque specs for your parts whatever you're installing once you have it all tightened up and torque you should be able to pull out your input shaft plug and you should be able to stick it back in with ease. Now next is going to be the bow housing. Came with a new throw bearing. And as I said before, this Ganari 
turbo kit came with this really nice stainless dump tube and I'm not sure if it's going to be able to clear the valve housing or not so we're going to just fit that up we might have to shave a little bit off so we'll just check that right now we clear not by much but we clear so that's good All right, now that we've got this all buttoned up, we're gonna get the car jacked up, we're gonna get this in the car. So when you're putting in the transmission, always make sure that you lube your shaft. Yes, I said lube your shaft. So I'm gonna put this up on my chest and I'm gonna lift it in the way that I always do. Always make sure the transmission's in gear, that way your spline isn't trying to turn in the clutch when you're trying to put it in. So if the spline is stationary in a gear, then when you turn the transmission from side to side, it's gonna locate the gears rather than not locating the gear. Shine your light up in here and make sure that your throat bearing is pretty center. It will sort of self-locate, but you sort of want to give it a little bit of a helping chance. And with any luck, it goes in that easy. Start your bolts. Don't suck it in yet, just start your bolts. Okay, so right now the transmission is in place through the spline, but it's not in the pilot bearing yet. So as a rule of thumb, take these bolts and snug them up just so they touch the valve housing. I can actually undo them with my fingers right now. You don't want to have any tension on it. And then from there, you're gonna jiggle the trans transmission up and down, side to side, as you're pushing and see if you can get it to go in. If it doesn't go in, then a trick that I learned down the road was to grab a crescent wrench and put it onto, the, onto your fork shaft here. And then basically, just like you're applying the clutch, you would push on the pressure plate, which would release the disc. As you're pushing this, just jiggle, jiggle, jiggle as you're applying tension with releasing the disc and it'll fall into place. If you do a proper job with the dummy plug at the beginning when you're lining up the clutch, it will go in, but sometimes it just it needs to be perfect. And in this case, it went in for me. So we're gonna button this up and move on to the cross member. All right, let's get the drive shaft and get the drive shaft in so we can put some fluid in it and get it on the ground. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little bit of transmission fluid in this thing. When you're doing an install, the easiest way is to take the shifter off and pour it down through the shifter hole. But I have it all sealed up with that new shifter on there with fresh silicone. So I'm gonna put it in through the fill plug and I'm just gonna go in through the shift boot with a long hose and a funnel and put it in that way.
Now, Ford uses ATF in their transmission. It doesn't matter if it's synthetic or whatever you want. Uh, I run synthetic ATF in here. And just something like trick shift or any other good fluid just gives it a little bit of a treat. So run whatever you want as long as it's a ATF based fluid. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to probably remove the hood insulation. So it's really close. It's actually, I can feel it touching the top here with my spacer plate. So we'll have to ditch the hood insulation. It's ugly anyway on this one. It's all torn up and gross and disgusting. There's this right here that's touching this vacuum. I, I might be able to root a different, a different source out instead of having to cut the rib out here. So I might be able to run the 90 straight down and run a different tree. Just have to make sure that throttle and everything is still gonna clear. All right, well, motor's in, tranny's in, drive shaft's in, fluid's in the transmission, everything's buttoned up on that part. So the uh, intake with the spacer that I made, obviously, as you saw earlier, it was contacting the foam. I took the foam off and it's still just pushing on this slightly. So I'll probably try a different elbow here on the vacuum line. As long as nothing's interfering with the throttle linkage and the throttle linkage isn't touching the hood like on Turbo Rustang, then that would be good. And uh, then on the other side on the turbo, everything's pretty much as expected. I think I forgot, I was spoiled with my header, it pulls the turbo forward and the factory location is really far back close to the firewall, so it's gonna be a pretty tricky downpipe to make. It has to go out and immediately down so, I mean, I've done it before in the turbo rusting, I can do it again. It just, it's not friendly for room with the receiver dryer and all that stuff. So we'll see how that all pans out. Uh, turbo drain and everything like that is all super happy. Everything else seems to be happy, happy. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna get it back down on the ground and get it back in the trailer and get all the cars put away because it's dinner time. All right guys, that's it for today. Let's get this in the trailer. Next video, we're gonna be walking up that canary kit and making sure that everything is good there and seeing exactly what mods are gonna be needed to make this fit. So like and subscribe if you like the videos and I'll see you next time for the next video.